We all know how important reputation is in this industry, so it's easy to see why more and more pros are turning to Anderson to build their projects and craft their legacies. Anderson has earned the trust of pros time and time again for over 120 years. They will work with you to build more efficiently, stay on budget, and earn more referrals by providing high-quality products and support, making your installs easier and confidence stronger. See how Anderson can help you craft your legacy at TrustAnderson.com. Our next question comes from Chris. Chris writes, Hey, Patrick and crew, I was listening to the podcast, as always, Friday morning on my way to work and heard Brian say he thinks he made a mistake installing an ERV rather than an HRV. I'm in northern Vermont in a tightly sealed raised ranch that I rehabilitated while living here, and we have very high humidity. We had very high humidity in the winter when I hadn't had the time or money to buy a ventilation system yet. I bought a Brone AI Series HRV. It's 160 CFM, and it's a great unit. It, it's quiet and delivers air perfectly even, and it has a MERV 13 filter that keeps the wildfire smoke out of the house during the summer. The problem is I had after running it for one year is the air in the house was too dry. Last winter, it was 25 to 35% relative humidity, and it was too humid in the summer, 65 to 75%. So my neighbor's son across the street has been working for an HVAC contractor the last couple of years, and I talked to him about it. He ordered me the same Brone unit in an ERV setup, so we're going to get that installed before winter and see how it goes. The construction moisture variable is not really at play in my area because it was built in 85, so it just, it's just my drywall compound from rehabilitation, and uh, it's not the concrete because it has had 40 years to dry. If Brian wants an HRV, I have one, I'll have one for sale for a good deal very soon. Thanks for all you guys do, and keep up the good work, Chris. Okay, so uh, I don't know who wants to go first. How do you know if you need an ERV or an HRV? Randy? Uh, almost every instance now with modern equipment, an ERV will work just fine. Um, that used to not be the case, you know, back when I first came in the industry, uh, especially where we're at in a very cold climate, HRVs were our norm. Um, getting our contractors to, to think we can now change to an ERV is a fight. I, I, most of them are still stuck. They, they, everybody wants to put on the, these HRVs. The problem with an HRV is they tend to, there's no moisture exchange, right? We're not bringing any moisture back into the house. Um, so, for instance, in my house, I'll go single digits, really cold weather. My, my relative humidity dropped down. To, I've seen as low as 9% inside the house. Um, that's just natural air exchange. I don't have an HRV. It's just natural <laughs> air exchange. And that's basically what an HRV is doing. It's, it's just pulling inside air and exchanging the temperature with it as it's exhausting the, the, the air back outside. Um, the cores have changed. That's the biggest thing. Um, the, the, the cores are now able to handle moisture, whereas they used to not be in the past. Um, the only exception of where you maybe want to use an HRV again is, uh, if you've got, a uh, the 170 house plants, um, if you have a, a humidity load, I mean, even then it's an ERV will probably work, but if you have an indoor swing pool, um, I know we talked about, uh, the, the, the grow indoor grow operations in, in on a previous episode. If you've got that, you might want the HRV. You want to remove as much of that humidity as possible. Um, but for the most part, ERV will work just fine. Uh, oh, uh, one thing, if you're in a cold climate, um, make sure you're buying the HRV that's rated for cold climates. There's, there's two different ones. There's one that's uh, tested at 32 degrees. There's another one that's tested at 13 degrees. You want to make sure you're getting that cold climate uh, HRV, not a standard, or ERV, not a standard uh, one that you would, might use in Missouri that might not be the right unit. What do you tell clients, Ian, uh, HRV or ERV? What do you tell them to do? Uh, most of the new home clients that we've talked to, we have put in the ERVs. The one that we actually got through to build, we did the Zender ERV, uh, and that was... So it's a remarkable product. I have a hard time believing how much it costs, but uh, I know most people in this area are doing the ERVs. Uh, when I built my house, because I started researching and planning the build of my house back in, 
I don't know, 2017, 2018, when I started to learn about high performance work, the general consensus still was in my cold climate that an HRV was the correct way to go. Uh, so I put in the, the cold climate HRV. I installed the same unit in my parents' house as well. And now I'm wondering a little bit if that's contributing to some of the humidity issues, 170 house plants aside. Uh, so it is part of what I'm trying to think about. And I'm trying to think it all the way through before I commit to redoing my ventilation system and redoing my makeup air, because I feel like the amount of knowledge that I've gained personally in the last three to four years since living in this house and getting to know people like Randy and Doug Horgan and Allison Bales, I, I kind of want to take one more crack at doing it to the best of my abilities today. Given what Guy was talking about just a little bit ago, uh, who the heck do you find? How do you find someone who's uh, skilled at designing these systems? And uh, the the duct work that Guy talked about, which is separate from the HVAC system, he mentioned that most HVAC contractors want to piggyback onto an existing uh, heating and cooling system. Randy, what do you think about that? Minnesota is a little bit unique in that we have we've been code mandated to put balanced mechanical ventilation in since like 2003 or 2002 somewhere in there it was it, we've been doing it over a long time our HVAC contractors are familiar with the systems um, they understand how to install budget has a lot to do with how they install them because um, you, you know you could, the, the best system is a standalone right it's it's duct it's got its own supply and, and uh, return air ducts that are are set up directly just for the HRV or ERV system. Um, most, but that's a, that's a lot of extra duct work. It's a lot of extra cost to the build. So a lot of times what we see is uh, th they'll they'll pull out the supply return of the, the existing duct work, run it through. There's specific ways you have to do that. We're not going to get into that, but um, following the manufacturer's instructions uh, is key. Sizing is also key. Um, if you're, you, you know, there's formulas based on, uh, ASHRAE 62.2 that, that size ventilation rates for, for a specific house, depending on the size, number of bedrooms, um, it's all part of the calculation. If you're just using the system for ventilation, that, that calculation works fine. But Allison Bales re recently wrote an article that if you're using that system for also to replace your bath ends, so you're using it for spot ventilation, double the size of the HRV or ERV yeah. and, and make sure you've got that capacity to pull a little extra air when it's in a, in a boost mode. It surprises me nearly every day how little we seem to know about HVAC systems, ventilation, and humidity control uh, in modern homes with low load conditions. Uh, it seems like we're still working it out on a case by case basis. But I think there's Is that a, a fair there's a misconception. I think that when you build a super tight low load home, that you simplify the HVAC, and that's something that I thought up until and really not that long ago when I saw the the passive house that we built at tds and granted we didn't certify it as passive but we built it to those standards and the the complexity of that system that mark rosenbaum designed for that project uh really surprised me at first but the house did require that complex of a system to achieve the occupant goals and i think that's what's you know what's lost on a lot of people I think about my HRV setup and it does have its own dedicated uh, ductwork system because I have no other ductwork. So in some respects, I think that part of it is, is functioning good. So do I need to look at adding dehumidification in a dedicated system separate to that? So by the time I'm done, am I gonna end up with like this complex, uh, Frankenstein HVAC system, but if it yields the uh, temperature and relative humidity outcome that I'm looking for in my house, maybe that's fine. 
yeah, systems like that, you really, they, they, they do get complicated. I would have them personally uh, designed. You know, I've used Allison Bale's company, Energy Vanguard, a few on, on a couple of occasions designing HVAC systems. Um, Mark Rosenbaum, I mean, he's a great source. And there's a couple other uh, yeah. nationally known ones that are that, that I think are, are, are the key to some of these systems. They're just making sure that you've got the right size ducts, the right size system, mm-hmm. the, the, the right size uh, uh, dampers, you know, yeah. the, how, how the, the air is flowing across the room. All that stuff takes, it, it has to be taken into account. And then the commissioning of the system. Yeah. Know, having the ability to monitor or measure how much airflow is moving through a specific duct for the specific room. There aren't a lot of people that can do that kind of stuff and finding yeah. the right person. Yeah. It's, it's key. Yeah. I've talked about how we turned our, or are in the process of turning our screen porch, which faces Southeast into a three season room. And we got all the windows in, we got it, you know, sheathed, sided, insulated and i was blown away by how that changed the temperature level inside of our great room which is adjacent to that now three season room throughout the summer it made it a lot warmer in that room it made it a lot more challenging to air condition and dehumidify so my instinct earlier this year was just like to blow the whole system up and try and figure out a way to make it cooler and more comfortable in that room. But now I'm thinking, well, what is, what's the effect of that going to be during winter? So is it going to have a net positive effect to the temperature of that room? So I'm kind of back to this point of, okay, I have to just sit tight, go through a whole seasonal cycle at home and see how this change to my uh to my building is affecting affecting the comfort of that room year-round ian what did your hvac installer say when you showed in this complicated design for your house from mark rosenbaum were they baffled or were they into it how did that work we uh, we specifically used a company that you know they have their lead in the field who he can pull out all of his uh, his books and his computer. He can do a manual jam on site. He can figure out the duct flow on site. Uh, he's a really knowledgeable installer. So they, they were into it. Uh, and, and Zender came out and commissioned that. Uh, ERV system for us. Uh, they installed all the the duct work, but Zender did the commissioning, and uh, they they were into it. Now, granted, they are a very expensive company to work with, so you do have to jump up to that level of expertise on a project like that. But this particular installer, because of his ability to do that work in the field, and sp- you know, bend the ductwork in the field, make it up to fit exactly what we need. I believe that over the long term of a project, he is less expensive than having somebody come in, do a rule of thumb, add too big of a ductwork, and now the furnace isn't working properly and we're getting a warranty call in six months when that house has gone through those seasonal changes that I mentioned before. Final thoughts on this very vast subject, Randy? I, I guess my, my, if you don't understand the systems, hire the right professional. Finding the right professional sometimes is here. It, it's tough. It's tough. Um, you know, if you can, if you can use a third-party designs, you know, like Allison Bales or or Mark Rosenbaum, that's key. I think I think I would do that if you can if you can afford that that service. That way, your HVAC contractor isn't the person designing. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they get a little nervous about that. They're 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 they may not agree all the time that hey, this is design. Ever. I think you it, mean to say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For for the work that I'm conceptualizing doing, uh, knowing my current self and past self, and assuming that carries to my future self. Uh, future Ian will probably wing it just based on stuff that he's read. <laughs> And then he'll start emailing Randy and Doug Horgan and Allison Bales and go, I did this and it it yielded this outcome. What did I do wrong? 
Uh, all good conversation for the podcast, I am sure, yes. That's right. It's content creation. Yeah. That's what I'll tell Sarah <laughs> when she's irritated at how the the all this work and money that I poured into the house yet again is performing. Be like, it's content creation. Just, just be cool. <laughs>